Yes. So the meeting is officially active. Ed, if you want to kick us off while I share the agenda. Okay, I'll call the meeting to uh, start. And I know the first agenda item, well, I'll Peter go through them, but I know the first one is a public forum. Yep. We do have uh, Dr. Heidkamp, I believe, uh, in the public forum, so uh, we can turn that over to you. Hey, hello, everyone. Uh, Patrick is good enough. You don't have to be all that formal with me <laughs> on those calls. That's, that's for work. Um, so I, I put a, a, a request in for having a nice look at a proposed uh, site for a uh, shellfish farm. And I was going to just see where we at with that. Um, I, there was a discussion with uh, Shannon Kelly from the Department of Aquaculture who forwarded a request to, uh, so, so I think we're kind of in a catch-22 <laughs> situation where the, uh, where you guys want from me to be approved as a shellfish grower, but the, um, the state can't really approve me as a shellfish grower unless there's a site that I could take. So Shannon sent an email to you, uh, Ed, with a letter, correct? I saw that. I mean, I don't know if any of the rest of you did, but I saw that today. Yes. Yeah. So there was a there was a letter out there. I could I think I could potentially share it on my screen. The Army Corps of Engineers is the one that is requesting us that you have a bed, not Shannon or the state. It's the Army Corps of the Engineers. That that might very well be. So I think that Shannon came up though with a solution that would basically say that there would be an intent. For, for the Shellfish Commission in Guilford to give me a bed if I, so there's a letter of intent was one of the options that she would suggest to, yeah, to move I forward. I'm trying to find to that right now. Short term letter of intent, like a two year yeah. type thing instead of our standard five year. No, uh, I th I, yeah, it was something, let me just see if I can pull it up real quick. Yeah, um, I know what it was, but we were, I'm, as a commission, we are going to just be discussing at some point, having a short term, if people aren't established shell fishermen, we're going to have a, maybe a short term kind of experimental, make sure that it works out instead of after a year, find out it doesn't work and you're stuck in a five-year lease. So no, that makes sense. Yeah. Years. I mean, for me, that would be okay. okay. You know, that's, these are things we have to weigh out, you know, to do that. So my, my question here was, I, I don't know of a precedent where we're discussing a commercial license without having an application for one. Uh, isn't, would that be the expectation? And I'm asking the, commit, the commission members in general, if that's kind of the process that we follow before we entertain a discussion on granting a commercial license. Well, so that that was, let, let me just chime in on that. So that was the, the discussion I had with Shannon. So what she said is that she can't let me put the application forward unless I have a ground that I could use. So that I would basically need a letter from you guys saying that you would be willing to grant me the site if I meet the requirements and get approved in the application process. So that's where the catch 22 is because the state needs, so otherwise the state usually was the state shellfish beds, it's that bidding process, like the closed bid process to get a, get a location. But because we're working, I'm working with you guys, with the town, what she needs from you is basically a letter that says that if I would be approved to be a shell fisherman through the state application procedure, that you would be willing to grant me the site. Right. And that's what we have to weigh as a commission, as I said, and we have to decide if we want to do that because that's not our normal policy. That's not historically how things have been done. And we have to discuss the ins and outs and how we want to proceed as a commission on that. No, exactly. And then, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm just presenting what I was presented with so you can make a decision. And I'm, I'm here to ask any questions or answer any questions that you may have of me and, you know, what I intend to do, et cetera, et cetera. So I can help shed a light on, on what the goals are. Let me ask a question, Ed, maybe you could clarify. 
if if so, if an individual petitions the proper authorities to perform kelp farming, um, it's a courtesy for the Guilford Shellfish Commission to comment. But we, we don't have any authority, my understanding was, it ultimately is the state decision to grant the application. The, that, that's the, sort of kelp farming, yes. Yeah, the relationship to shellfishing and right. kelp farming, I'm not aware of any direct policy that one has to be related to the other. And that's because this is going in as a joint application to the Army Corps of Engineers. So but if Patrick were to separate out the shell fishing um, and simply apply for a kelp license, um, that, that's something on, that he does on his own with the state. If at a later date, he wants to apply for a shell fishing license in that area, that doesn't really involve the state. That's our jurisdiction. Is that correct? The, I think right. that I don't even know how it would work doing a joint thing. Yeah, that's the I joint don't know how it would work with the joint thing because part of that leads to the state and part goes towards the town. From my understanding, is I need and normally a shellfish state, permit. What I need from you is basically the shellfish, the permit. Army Corps of Engineers. Yeah, that's the confusing part, Patrick, because they're really not related. Well, they're only related in space, right? So if if I'm, um, I, I don't want to get a state kelp licensing on top of a shellfish bed without also getting the shellfish license, because I want to grow oysters. So that's the number one thing, and that's through you. So it ends up being a multi-species farm in the end, because I think there's environmental benefits and there's also benefits in terms of shell thickness and flesh. Because you're tying them in together in one permit, it is coming to us now. Yes, correct. If it was one or the other, it would be cut and dry. So why don't we start with the shellfish one? Because that's my number one goal. And then the, the seaweed is through the state afterwards. That's a that's a straight, straight up thing. The other that's way around I mean, is much more common. Normally when we do Ed, we're missing that's what I'm trying to say. Ed, we're missing you. You're coming in and out and in and out. So it's difficult. People are talking over each other. Sorry. It's just I'm in a very bad part of the yeah. area of reception. Yeah. So that's what we're trying to do by the fact that you filed with the Army Corps of Engineers for the kelp is making it the twofold thing. Normally we don't do the Army Corps of Engineers for the commercial license. Okay, I have not filed anything yet because I wanted to wait on you so that I can do the shellfish licensing part first. Well, if I may, and I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, the, the guidance would be, Patrick, it, we, we don't have an application for a shellfish commercial license in that area. So please submit one. Uh, we, we can base the decision on the merits of the shellfish license. Um, it, assuming that's granted, you then can go to the state uh, to petition for the kelp farming on that spot. It's, they're really not related um, directly. That's, that's kind of the dilemma. It's the first time we've, I think, really had this come our way. So the shellfish license, though, I go through the state all first, correct? Or do I go through the town first? Shannon would help you with that. Well, that's that. So that's what she said. So what she wanted from you is this letter of um, that basically states that you would be willing to grant me the spot if I get approved by the state to be a shellfish grower. Right. And what I'm saying is at this point, we have to do, we still have to do talk to the state further now that we have more information is from all the commissioners. And then we would have to decide when we get your actual permit. It's not our precedent. We don't send letters of intent. Well, but that's where that's the catch 22 is that Shannon said, because she said she can't give me a permit until you guys say that I can have a space. 
So I, I, I mean, right. I'm not the expert on the regulations. That's just the communication yeah, I got from Shannon. We do, not, we do not do it by letter of intent. We do it as an application process. If we're going to change our policy and start doing letters of intent, we have to vote on that as a commission and it has to be discussed as a commission. And we'd have to look into further how other towns handle that and whatnot. It's not going to be an overnight process. No, no, I, I understand yeah. that. Patrick, it, I think it is as simple as put the kelp farming aside. And, and if the, the issue is a, a approval of a request for a commercial shell fishing license, please go through that process so we receive the request. Uh, and then we can act on the request for a commercial shell fishing license. No, and, and that's what I did. And that's where yeah. Shannon said that she cannot move along with that unless you guys would send this letter. Patrick, the letter Shannon sent us has the Army Corps of Engineers saying they need that. It's not Shannon needing it. It's the Army Corps of Engineers, the federal government. And they're doing that because the kelp farm, right. the kelp permit goes through the Army Corps of Engineers because you could be putting gear in the way of uh, navigable waterways. Okay, okay, okay. That makes sense. Yeah, we're, we're trying to be, you know, cooperative here just in terms of the process. No, no, I know, I know yeah. that. I, I, I know you're not trying to slow anything down or anything. I'm just, you know, for me, it's a new process. And yeah. I, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm really grateful for all the help and all the suggestions I'm getting. That's really all I'm saying. And it, it so might I, will, be I will work with Shannon on the shellfish first, because that's my number one goal anyways. And then, you know, hope and then do the kelp thing afterwards, which should be pretty straightforward once the shellfish ground is, is all set. And it, might be, it might also involve us dealing with Shannon also and finding out more information. No, I will, I, will definitely CC, I will definitely CC you on all communications, because I think that makes it a lot easier. Because then everybody who's involved is, you know, knows what's going on and makes it, you know, move smoothly and at least can keep the lines of communication open on that one. So I, I do really appreciate your feedback and uh, I'll, I'll keep you all in the loop and I'll CC you on you, Ed, and, you know, uh, whoever else needs to be CC'd on it so that we can move this along. Um, and I'll get back in touch with Shannon. I'm already working on my, my certifications for the food safety and all that type of stuff. So that should all be done. All right. Some of the stuff is pretty slow right now because of, um, you know, what do you call it? Because of COVID and just not having lots of in-person trainings. Okay. Uh, excuse right. me. I just want to make a point of order here that, uh, that, uh, the process also includes a public hearing. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm aware of that. Okay, through the Shellfish Commission public hearing. No, there's a Shellfish Commission public hearing. There's also a DEP public hearing. No, I'm, I'm well aware of that. I'm just trying to figure out what timelines and what the best process, and I really appreciate your feedback on that. So, so leaving it at this, I'm, I'm going to get in touch with Shannon. We're going to do Shellfish first and then worry about the kelp uh, afterwards. It'll make it a lot easier. Yes. Excellent. I, I'll, I'll do that. Thank you so much, Peter and Ed and everybody else on the on the line. Appreciate that. So good luck and look forward to uh, the, the next time we get together. Excellent. Thank you so much. I'll probably be at the next meeting. So, you know, just to kind of make sure that we have everything. And by that time, we probably have paperwork ready to share and everything. Very good. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good night, Patrick. Thanks. Bye bye. All right. I'm pulling back on the uh, agenda if we have any yeah. other members of the public. Currently not. I, the next item, uh, Ed and Judy, are minutes of the March 10th, 2021 meeting. Everybody mm -hmm. have a chance to look at those? Mm -hmm. Yep. Anybody no, have any changes? I did, Ed. Okay. All right. Anybody want to want to make a motion to approve or? I'll make a motion to accept the uh, minutes as uh, stated. Second by John Hall. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Agreed. 
Hi, John. I didn't know you made it. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Next item is commercial activity and licenses. I think that would be me. Um, so we'll take or a Peter look at that. Get together next week. Um, uh, sorry, Ed? Uh, Peter, uh, just so you know, could you, when you make your report, could you save the recreational sales for that part of the uh, meeting, which is under subcommittees? under yes. recreation um, sure. instead of commercial. The commercial activity and license agreement is separate from the recreation sales. Thank you. So I know it gets a little confusing with everybody yeah, forget that. collecting money and everything. Specific so for commercial, commercial in the town next week. Can you say that again, Ed, you're muffled. Peter and I are going to talk when I get into town late next week on the commercial and just see where we stand and where everything is with that. So if there's no okay? other comment, I should move on to the next item, bills and correspondence. Um, do you have the bills ready? I do, specific to bills for the month I have Fred Hill Warden fees, $360. Nancy Matyasovsky, date entry, $26.23. Alan Brown, Warden fees, $200. Uh, Schweitzer Trash Collection Trolley Road, $159. Uh, Judy, I didn't, I don't believe I have your invoice, do I? I I sent it a while ago. Oh, I might not have looked that far back. Yeah, I think I sent it like. Do you, have, do you know the amount by chance? Yeah. I don't at the moment, but I'll, I'll look it up and I'll give it to you before in a minute. I can look it up, but Very don't good. wait. Don't wait for me. I will just tell you later. All right. All right so I have currently uh, $745.63. Okay. Does anybody want to make a motion on that? Make a motion we approve the bills. I second that motion. Uh, when we make the motions and seconds, can we say our name with them so Judy can pick up on that? But all in favor? Aye. 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 Was, that, was that was that John and Peter who were? Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Moving on to the next topic, warden's report. Some correspondence. We sent a doc plan from race, uh, shore race construction, or planning out to everybody. They had sent that. I thought they were going to be here during the public forum to speak tonight, but everybody can view those plans. I guess the concern I have is that it is commercial lot so we will need to any adjacent lot or lot that it touches we need to make sure that the recreation or the commercial harvester has, can supply their feedback for it so we'll i'll get in touch with ricky greenleaf and show him the proposed plans so at this point I don't think we can't vote on it. So we'd have to wait till next meeting after we have Ricky's input. Uh, Ed, can you just say that the address of that or is there is there just for the minutes, I just wanna put in, I usually put in an address of some kind or just Indian Cove or wherever it is. It's, uh, it's I think like 200 uh, Old Quarry Road. Okay. It's actually the Yale property there, and it actually touches uh, Harrison Cove. Okay, thanks. That's all we have for bills or correspondence. Anybody else have anything? 
Um, I, the correspondence is also emails. I just want to remind people. So I think you got, did you get the email from, um, was it Shannon Kelly? She, did you all get that or was it just? I, yeah, that was forwarded. Because I got it, but I didn't know if it was to everybody. Okay. So there was the correspondence from Shannon Kelly in reference to Patrick's Heidekamp's uh, inquiring about permits and that. There was also, sorry, there was also a, another correspondence from Shannon where she proposed, uh, she was informationally giving us, uh, what do you call it, notice of a kelp, another kelp permit in that same area over by Goose Rocks, kind of on the Brantford Guilford line. That was, that permit was also forwarded to everybody. Kelp, oh, boom. What was that? There's a kelp boom, I guess, huh? Did we lose I, it? I, I, I just heard something about kelp. That was John. John. Yeah, John I'm, agreed. I'm sorry. I just I made a comment that there's a big kelp. I think he's trying to say there's a kelp right. now. Yes, there is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's move on to Warden's report. I have. Um... Alan's report, uh, he had um, five um, activities that he cited on, uh, everything kind of checked out okay. I did speak with him earlier today. Uh, it was sort of an interesting comment I'll share. There, there were two gentlemen, older gentlemen, that uh, went out to shellfish, one of which sat in a chair on the, the banks of the, the beach area. The second person went out clamming came back with two buckets of clams. So Alan was, was dismayed. He, he's like, well, you, you really, you know, you can only have one bucket. And the fellow said, well, the other one was for my, my friend. And <laughs> so, you know, Alan shared with me, you know, that that's really not practice. Uh, when I went to pick up the licenses at Captain Morgan's, uh, I, I learned that, um, you know, Captain Morgan had sold the, the two individuals those licenses, one of whom is handicapped. And uh, in the past, uh, this had come up and came before the Shellfish Commission, who said, yes, I mean, that's acceptable. That, you know, if there's a, a license holder who's handicapped and can't shellfish and someone else is going to go out and do the clamming on their behalf, uh, we, we understood that was, frankly, a noble thing. So... Uh, I, I've got to get back to Alan, and I'll let the, unless the commission feels otherwise, let let the uh, wardens know that you know in that sort of case, I mean, that that's an acceptable violation of policy. Uh, it's actually doing the right thing. So I was raising that. I want to be sure that that, since that had happened that with selfish before I was on the commission, that, that we all agree that's the right um, answer. Yes, that is. If it. Yeah. Visibly, That's good. yeah, yeah. Uh, the yeah. time it was about two, two and a half years ago. There was somebody on the beach who had literally had some sort of almost open heart surgery, and the wound wasn't fully closed or healed yet, and somebody was clamming for them. And I was actually there, and that's when it came to light that some people felt it shouldn't be, or whatever. And I said, no, absolutely not. This person shouldn't be able to get their clams kind of thing. We should be blessed to have friends like that. Yeah. I mean, they pay for, they pay for a license and yeah. how many clams is uh, an elderly individual going to take for their front? So I, I don't, if people are, you know, uh, exploiting it or making it stink, maybe it's yeah. a different conversation. No. Okay, good. Thank you. All right. 
Uh, recreation, do you have anything, Peter? We move to subcommittees, thank you. Yep, recreation, so um, I, um, I do have, I can report um, for the month for, uh, for recreation com um, residential licenses, $648 from Fishing Factory, cash, nine non-res. These, uh, $1,636 by check, one res for res senior, 14 non-res. Uh, GSC $55 cash nine uh, non res senior um, and let me see no that's actually I'm missing that one sorry two res senior one res uh, from uh, town hall I picked up several um, the uh, the filings for uh, sales I think it was from December through March four thousand one hundred and thirty five dollars so a significant amount of um, sales that have gone direct to finance. So I'm not going to go through all that. Uh, another um, $405 cash, four non-res, one non-res senior, one res, one res senior. And then Captain Morgan uh, was, uh, I had not picked up last month. I expected this to be a larger number. It was $488 only because uh, he, he was, his people that do this summary for him were behind due to, I think some impacts on COVID. So this was not representative of the total sales. We'll, we'll reconcile that next month, $488, five non-res, one res senior, three res. So total of $7,367. Peter, I have a single uh, residential one I gotta get to you. Okay. Yep, please do so your convenience and I'll get it in next month. So next topic, water sampling, Ed and Bob. Yep, so Bob is on top of it. I think he and Mike went out a week or two ago. Do we, I know they got their, the mark one in, the open run. So we're on schedule. We just have to get April open run. Uh, there was a resident who might be interested in getting on the commission and his contact, he at least wants to volunteer and help with sampling if we do it and stuff. So I will get that name to Bob and Mike on the water sampling there. But they've been doing a great job. Go down to, I can kind of see Boat is next, boat, I think. Yep, Boat. It boats in the water. Okay. It went in, I think, yesterday or the day before. Um, just want to thank Bob, even though he's not here. He, uh, we, we spent about, you know, four or five hours uh, getting it cleaned up and ready and uh, it came out nice. Is everything functioning we on the boat? Put it in about a week. Yes, we actually put it in about a week ago. I think we put it in last Wednesday. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm a week behind. <laughs> but I remember Bob texted me the day it went in. Yeah, is everything functioning on the boat? I know there was there was some issue with the bilge or something like that. Boat's fine. Yeah, there was an issue last year where the um there was a bad seam on the um bait well where it met the floor, and um I I, I re uh, caulked it with uh you know three M forty two hundred. But we also um, found the second plug for the bilge pump or for the bilge. There's one up by the water line. What's what's this Ed? There's a second, you know, the plug that screws out at the bottom of the bilge. Yes. There was a second one below the scupper on the starboard side on the stern, up higher, but still below the water line. That's where the water was coming from. They never is, that, is, is that rectified? Like we put a new plug in it? Yes, I donated one. Oh, good. Okay. Hey, um, mm -hmm. also too, Bob brought this up. Um, if you guys could, um, I guess pre-approve um some funds the, the trailer um you know bob bob's really all about getting lights for it i mean i don't think it's a big deal but whatever if you guys want lights on them i'll, I'll throw lights on the trailer it needs a new trailer winch so together i mean i, I think it's going to be around like 300 dollars probably for all that stuff if you guys want to uh pre-approve that i'll get it done you know in the next you know month or so Yeah. 
Anyone? I guess we, can I bring a motion for that? I guess uh, yes. approval up to three hundred dollars for trailer repairs. Yeah, I second, second that motion. I think we have a responsibility to maintain the integrity mm -hmm. of the trailer as a town entity. Yeah. So it's 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 legit on the road. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Docking. I have a call into Patty uh, trying to get some bottom run oysters. I have not heard back from her. As soon as I do, I will let you know. It's another thing. Do we want to vote to automatically stock up to twenty five hundred dollars? Uh, yeah, and yeah, let me comment because finance is next. I was looking at our. I have the statement through March and. Right now, it looks like we're, we've got another six grand against budget to spend on recreational stocking with, you know, we don't have any uh, expenses in April, so really two months to go. So, you know, I my input would be uh, if we can spend the 6,000, unless people feel different, we, sh we should try to do that. We do know that um, activity is was high last year. I expect it's already going to, it's going to be high this year as well as people uh, you know, seek, uh, you know, outdoor activities. So we, perhaps we want to uh, pre-approve a higher amount if the opportunity presents itself. All right. Do we want to maybe do $3,000 worth of oysters and see if we can get in touch with a clam person and get some clams in there? Sounds good. All right. Let's, so let's yep. start with maybe if somebody wants to make a motion on the, for the oysters. I make a motion uh, we accept for three thousand for oysters. Three thousand dollars. Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the second part of that is we. I'll try and call around and see if there's anybody with any clams we can stock. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. Yeah. I. I. Uh... Propose that we allocate uh, another three thousand dollars for, you know, opportunistically looking for an additional um, clam stocking. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Move finance. Uh, finance just a summary through March twenty twenty one. We. Um, we're running at about uh, $33,554 against the total budget of 52,225 our um our sorry expenditures so our revenues are 35763 through march against the budgeted amount of revenue of 53350 and our expenses are running at 33554 Against the budget of expenses of 52 to 25, so we are running uh, to the good on uh, about 2,209 dollars uh, year to date. With you know roughly you know not, April's not in this, so three months remaining in terms of the fiscal year. So it seems like we're in good shape. There's a lot of revenue still not represented here. I know the as I said earlier, Captain Morgan's. It's, sitting on a, a significant amount of sales that just hadn't been brought together, as I said earlier. So, so far, so good. All right. Sounds good. Do we have any special projects? Uh, none, none to report. Okay. Signs. Signs. Uh, I, right before I went away, the day we put the boat in, Actually, I think it was the morning before I went away. Yeah, it was a couple of whatever. Uh, I gave Bob Berger a couple of the keys that were turned over from Tony uh, in case they got there was a closure while I was gone. Uh, I think right now the best way to kind of handle it is uh, signs by committee kind of thing. Kind of if we get closed, who might be available the soonest to help and we can get keys to more people, so more people will be available to help with signs. That's all I have on signs. Yep. I mean, Alan has volunteered to do that on Trolley Road. 
Okay. See, that's what I'm saying. By committee, you know, it might be Alan doing that. Somebody yeah. else could do this area or whatever. So, um, let's move on to the website. I think the only updates there um, will be with Mike's um, appointment to full commission member. That'll be updated. I'll keep an eye on that. Make sure Tracy's done that. And I had spoken with her about updating the members who, um, who are now off the commission. Uh, we haven't done a lot with our Facebook page. I'll continue to advocate uh, all of us here uh, having a hand in, in just anything of interest, post that. We do get people drawn to the site. It, uh, it continue to become a good, uh, useful facility. And once we do have the ability to have the, the live update that was normally going over the, um, the phone recording, to feed that to the Facebook page and to the website, that would be a major improvement. So people can go from their phones online uh, and get current status of open closure. So uh, you know that's something I'm hoping we can we can achieve. All right, uh, land acquisition. Okay, we have uh, maybe. Several parcels uh, the town is looking at. I can't name them, but they are looking at some places uh, to expand uh, the conservation uh, uh, of, the, of land around. Nothing to do with shellfish, but it has some land pieces they want to look at. Uh, one thing you're going to finalize is possibly the uh, land around public works, the present public works. They might be buying a piece over there. They're figuring out the final environmental impacts on that one. And that's about it. Okay. Shellfish related. Let's go Nothing see Sea Grant. All right, let's go Sea Grant. Uh, no report. All right. Nothing from Sea Grant. Harbor management. So, yeah, Judy, that should, I think, be me. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, the, the only thing of interest is I've not yet seen the application come in, but there, you know, Fred Griswold had given me a heads up that the uh, there's a doc request coming in from the um, uh, from Yale that has uh, an operation and it uh, and as you had said it's sitting in one of our commercial lots. Okay. So we're going to have to reach out, I believe, to the uh, uh, I can't remember we said that was Chris that has that that lot. Um, Ricky Greenleaf. Great, thank you, Ricky, to get his input on that. Okay. Thank you. I just not seen the um, application come in yet. Okay. Let's see, the review of the shellfish management plan. They are still working on that at the state, of course. Okay. Uh, with the furloughs and COVID, all that, it's slow, but and she, uh, what's her name? Alyssa is putting it in her annual report. And she said our reports look good, our water samples look good, and we should be able to move up to the inch and a half or two inch closure on other areas. So that's good news. And she basically said, stick on it, you know, stick, keep bothering her to get it done. So it's kind of I'm using the monthly meeting as the time to. Remind me to remind her. So, does anybody have any new business? No. All right. No. Oh, uh, Judy, can I make a motion or can somebody make a motion that I jump back on? Um, I forgot a correspondence slash commercial thing. I don't know. What uh, is this, if, if it's just correspondence, you don't need a motion. You can just say it. I did want to add that I can tell you what my invoice amount is. <laughs> okay, I can add that. It's it's uh, just fifty three twenty five for March. Fifty three dollars and twenty five cents. A bargain. <laughs> Right. 
Bueller. Anyone want to make a motion to add Judy's invoice to our bills? Yeah, I, I propose that we amend the um, approved payables by adding fifty-three dollars and twenty-five cents. No second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. The quick correspondence I was mentioning is there had been a possibility of a, another new commercial person, and they texted me last night that they, the whatever the boat they were trying to get, kind of fell through. So at this time they're not going to be pursuing a clam lot or anything, but they just wanted to reach out and thank us for you know considering them ahead of time kind of thing. So that was, I just wanted to make sure. Do you want to add their name or no? Is it um, just? I don't think it ever came up. Is it? Oh, yeah, I can. It was Jack Kramer. Okay. Yeah, I thought it might be him, Ed. Yep. He's a young, I think, like 16 or 17 year old Guilford resident with a lot of interest in shell fishing. It just wasn't going to work out at this time for him. So that's all I have. Does anybody else have anything else? Nope. Item 10, anybody want to take care of that one? Propose that uh, we adjourn the meeting. Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, meeting adjourned. Good to see you, everyone. Bye, everybody. Thank take you. Take care, guys. Bye now. <laughs>